Well, hello, man cavers. The hat is on again because this little mild spell we've had has gone. We're back down to a good two degrees. Anyhow, today, a bit more on the SL1. Roll the credits. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, what we've decided to do is, or I've decided to do, after a phone call from a friend of mine, Jeff, the other day, your Lister SL, he says, if you want to fire that, you need a handle, I said, I do. He says, you've got a Lister B, haven't you? I said, yes, I have. And there is the Lister B. He said, the handle off a Lister B will fit that. And I hadn't thought of it. So let's have a look. Get up. Cool, got a rust. Here's our handle for our list to be. He says it should fit that engine. Well, that's good. Do the pin lock in. There we go. There you go. So we have a handle. Right. Next thing. I thought. Now I don't know what you guys think of this crazy idea. But um. Before I go coupling this engine up to this generator. I think. It would be an idea. Because this engine has been sitting so long unused and unstarred. I think it would be a good idea to, like, you know, clean out the oil strainer and the crankcase, change the oil, um, get the fuel system bled up, because I'm assuming if there is any diesel in there, what hasn't sort of leaked out over the years, I'm assuming it's going to be ripe. Um, so, yeah, I think what we're going to do, first of all, we'll try and prime up the fuel system, get that injector squeaking, then we'll get the crankcase door off, and change the oil and clean out the strainer in there the reason i'm doing it in that order from memory i think your fuel pump is inside underneath this cover and i think when you bleed it i think there's a bleeder on the fuel pump which you undo and diesel will run out but i think that runs through with the oil sump so you don't really want to be putting diesel on top of your new oil. So first job, I think, is going to be bleed up this fuel system, if we can. Clean out that filter housing. I haven't got a new filter. I'm assuming there's one in there. So we'll have to have a look when we get it off. And if there is one in there, I'll see if I can get a new one. And we're going to try and fire this engine up off the generator. Just to see if she runs. So... Let me get set up and I'll be back. Right, we've got this set up. Let me get this handle and just see if we've got any form of compression. Of course, do you know I've never even turned this engine over? Now, where's my decompressor? Oh, we've got compression there. So that's decompress on. That's compressed on. Right. Our decompressor is all working. Oh, I see. So there's actually a little pin there to hold this in. Oh, God, I that. Ah, I'm with you. I've just noticed something. There is provisions for manual starting. On here, look. Let me get the flash on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Cool, look at the state of this. We have, here's our decompressor, which... 
pivots down like so. There is actually a hole there, look, and a little pin. So if you want to start this manually, I reckon you put that pin in there to hold the decompressor off. And there you go. I'm guessing that's what that's for. And the same with here, look. There is actually, for your fuel rack, there's a little hole where you push that pin in. Which is obviously, I'm assuming, to override these solenoids. So you can start the engine manually. Right. That is a very interesting little snippet. There we go. Very interesting indeed. So now we've got that done, I think what we need to do is take this filter off and just see what sort of state it's in or if there's any fuel in here. I really don't know. So let me get a tub and we'll see if there's any fuel in this thing. Right, I got it. Hang on, I want to get my kneeling pad, guys. So I'm not kneeling on the floor. Bad for your knees. Here we go. Here's my kneeling pad. Excellent. Right. So I'm assuming this filter just twist off. Is there any diesel in here? Well, it's got a mighty long thread on it. Oh, here we go. Cool. Well, there's a little bit of diesel, and that's not the best. But look at the state of that bowl. I think we need to clean this bowl out. And is there a filter on there? There's a filter in here. Ah! Ah, spraying. Well, that filter got a hole in it. I think. Oh, the filter has held on with a bolt, look. So there is, look at the state of that filter. Right, I think, I haven't got a new filter, so I think what we're going to do is, look at the state of that. I think I need to get a rag and clean that filter up. And just see if that's going to come clean at all. Which it might. I know that ain't going to... I know it's not going to clean the element, but... Well, at least the filter is wet. Ah, we have a part number on here. Brilliant. But I think this filter will do us for starting purposes. The missus is going to be so pleased tonight when she realises that I'm full and stink of diesel. She's going to be really, really impressed. There we go, we have a part number on there. But for now, we're going to just plop this back on. Ah, how did this go? Oh, I see. So there is a little screw hole up there. Look, there we go, there's the screw hole. Excellent stuff. Oh, I see. Right, okay. Now, we'll just clean this bowl out. If it will clean. Cool. Let's give this bowl a clean up. It's plastic. Years ago, these used to be glass. I don't know what year this thing is. I'm guessing it's late 60s, early 70s. But I really don't know. Really don't know. Now, the thing with diesel system is it's imperative they are kept pretty clean. Because the last thing you want is grit, dirt and shite getting into your fuel pump and injector. So that's it there, we'll clean them threads up, that's cleaned up, 
we've cleaned that filter up although it isn't perfect that can sit there and we can screw him back on hammer so what do you reckon is that a good idea see if this engine actually runs before i get it coupled up to that generator and put it on the trailer because i can't see no point getting it all lifted on the trailer go to start it and it's got a problem and needs to come off there again there we go we got the threads now now i don't have a fuel tank for this but off camera <clears throat> I did make one up, one what will fit on the brass pipe fitting which we've got over here. I did actually get a fitting and put it into a plastic tank, it's a barge I know but it's, it's a makeshift fuel tank. There's the diesel what come out, that was all what was in that filter housing, bit of a mess. So, let's check the oil. Oh, that isn't a good sign. Let's dip that again. Whoops. It's not even showing on the stick. Have we got an engine here that burn oil? Has someone drained it out over the years? Who knows? So yes. Well that's a damn good job that I checked all that before I just went to start the damn thing. Alright. Let's hope we ain't got one that's a bad smoker. We just never know. Alright, I'm going to just dig in here a bit. I'm going to get inside this door. And just see if the fuel pump is in there. Alright, I think we need a screwdriver. I think. Here we go. Now let's see what's inside here. And where our injector is, I'm guessing that's under this rocker cupboard. Because I can't see it externally anywhere. I'm not familiar with LR SR1 engines. I'm really not. So this is a learning experience to me, but I'm pretty sure that the fuel pumps are in here. You know, these screws probably haven't been out here cool, since this engine was new. And look how easy everything just comes off. There we go. So what's behind this door? Oh, okay, I don't know. There's oil in there, so she's not... I wouldn't say she's ran out of oil. I think she might just be very low. That's a very good sign that there's actually oil inside there. Let's have a look in here. What we got in here look i think there might be a fuel pump in there well there's a crap load of oil ah there's our fuel pump rack there you go look move the lever moves that rack inside there so we've got oil all around here there you go there's drain holes in the bottom there What's this? I haven't got a clue. Right. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to set up a fuel tank on that pipe. My little fuel tank. I think I'm going to take this off just so I can see what's underneath it. Yeah, let's take this off, see if we can see what's underneath there. Right, will these come off? Well, that's coming off. Well, they're actually surprisingly 
Ah, I see the nut ain't coming off. The whole stud's coming out, look. It's nice to see there's fresh oil on everything, so it tells me this engine's not been sort of ran out of oil. And I like how it hasn't been cleaned on the outside. So what's, what is actually under here? Because the decompressor is all attached to this rocker box. Now, all the, the decompressing gubbins is all attached. Ah, oh, the decompressor is all inside here, look. Here's our decompressor. Must be that nib pushed down on this valve. So let's lay him out the way gently. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. Right. We got that out of the way. So there's inside our valve. Ah, inside our compress inside our rocker cover. There we are. Let's get that up a bit. There we go. So what are we looking at now? There we go. Right, I see in here we have an injector pipe. So I'm going to crack this injector pipe off. Uh, yeah, it's going to need to be cracked off to crank it to get diesel up. Let me get these bolts out of the way so I don't lose them. The last thing we want to do is be losing parts. Right. Have we got a spanner what fit? Ah, yes we have. Come on. Oh. Oh. Come on. I don't know how we're going to get this back on. It looks a bit of a... Ah, oh, that little capillary pipe we saw, I reckon that carries oil. Yeah, I reckon that carries oil, because there's a... This looked like a little oil spray bar. Alright, we've got this pipe... Wouldn't say right off, but loose. Because I think you prime these old, they look like an old CAV pump or something. And I'm pretty sure you give them a detailed prime by actually taking off. Hang on. I think you give them a detailed prime by taking the pipe off and lifting up the release valve to actually get diesel out. Right, let me hook my fuel tank up and then we'll get back to this. All right, here we have our fuel tank set up. It's very crude. I just got an old plastic tank. Found a brass fitting that goes in it. And I think that's going to be supplying us with fuel. First thing to do is, I think we've got, let me zoom out. There we go. I think we've got two bleeders here and here. So let me get them open. All right, got some pliers. Cool. Will these actually undo? Or are we... They don't... Ah, that one looks like that's coming undone. Have we got two of them? Do they both undo? I'm trying to do this one-handed while I hold the camera with the other. Ah, oh, they're coming undone. Right, let's see if we get any diesel out. Right, nothing at the minute. Oh. Yeah. Is she not flowing down that pipe? I thought I had plenty of fall on it. Or is it just taking a while to fill the filter housing up? What's it going on? I would have thought that would have vented out there. There's no kink in our pipe. I think we've got enough fall. I mean, the thing is down there and the tank is up there. So I would have thought we would have had enough fall. Hmm. Let's get this other one out just in case. 
I don't suppose it's going to make any difference because it all goes into the housing. Well, we've got both of these out now. Shouldn't even need to come out because I've actually got little holes in them, look. So you shouldn't need to remove them all the way. Oh, well, what's going on here? Unless that's so dry. You saying that, that filter was wet. Look like we've got a third one in here, look. But unless we can actually get diesel to come up here, we're not going to be getting anywhere. Hmm. Well, isn't this strange? Let me do the old blow in the top of the tank trick. I'm just blowing in the top of this tank to try and pressurise it a bit. Ah! Right, ah, here we go, here we go. She got a bit of pressurising. There we go. So, yeah, I just had a blow through it. I reckon... The diesel got to blow through. Oh, what's coming out of this side now? Good, good. So we're getting diesel down to here. Come on. Excellent. So she just wanted that little blow trick. What about this one here? Is that one or is that nothing? Uh, no, I don't like the idea of that one. I think that's probably best to be left alone. But right, we have diesel. We have diesel coming out of there now. I'm assuming in our pump, I think that's a bleeder. This nut here, I think. Have I got anything that fits that? No, that's the wrong size. Let me get a sock at what go on there. All right, I've had to give up and put you guys back in the trolley, but I can't do this one-handed. Is that the right size socket? Well, blow me. That ain't the right size socket either. Maybe it's this one. Yeah. Right, I hope you can see in there, guys. Hopefully, we're going to be getting some diesel out of here. Cool. She was a bit tight. Have we got anything coming out? Well, we've got a drip. We really want to let the diesel run free to get any air bubbles out of it. I can still see air bubbles coming out of the hole where this come out. And we've still got a flow of diesel, so I think we do have enough fall on our tank. So let's get this back in. There we go. So we've got diesel up here. And that's nipped back up. Right, I think we need to see what we can do with regards. God, God, bugger. Right. That injector pipe on there is very tight. Instead of cracking that injector pipe off, let's see if we can turn this over and get any diesel coming out of the top here. Don't know how we're going to do this because the decompressor has turned off. Um, well, I'm not sure quite how we're going to manage this. But well, there we go. I think what we need to do is get you guys propped up here. If I bring you up, there we go. 
and try and get you over so you can see downwards into where that injector pipe is. Where are we? There we go. There we go. There we go. Here's our loose injector pipe. Let me give that a little crank. I've somehow got to hold that decompressed though without a decompressor. So I reckon I've got to push down gently on this valve. Right, let's give that a go. And see if we can get any diesel pumping up here. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, she's definitely got compression. I'm just holding that valve slightly open. But can we get can we get a spit of diesel out? You'll know if these injectors work because they start creaking. They make a distinct creak noise. Now is that a light reflection or have we got a little bit of diesel coming out of that pipe? What's it doing? Yeah, I think we've got a little bit of diesel coming out of this pipe. So I think if we tighten that back up. Where's my spanner? Come yeah, on. It's awkward to get in there. Very awkward to get in there. You've got to do this pipe an eighth of a turn at a time. Well, you can only do it so far up with your fingers. Sorry, my fat hand is in the way. Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it over the weekend. I thought, you know, this engine's not been run for so long. I think before I go mounting it back up to that generator. There we go. <clears throat> Right, she's nipped up. Yeah, I thought before we mount it up to that generator, why don't we actually... Now I've got a handle, why don't we actually see if it runs and make sure it runs okay before we couple it all up. But that involves changing the oil, you know, bleeding this fuel system up and basically going from there. So let's hold this and see if we can get a squeak out of that injector. We might... Can't hear nothing at the minute. Hang on. handle don't really go on this engine far enough you know of course that pulley is in the way come on I'm not hearing any kind of creak. Cool. All right. Well, you don't seem to be getting any sort of creak on that injector. Hmm. That's bizarre. Tell you what I am going to do. Where are we? 
There we go. Let's get you back down. All right, we're back in here. I'm going to see if we've got any right that's a two spanner job so i need another spanner to hold that nut all right back in a second all right let's get this off you can't really see what i'm doing in here but i'm basically holding the Pipe. Oh, I think I've slackened it. Where are we? I'm trying to get this injector pipe off and see if any diesel flow out. Where is it? I've lost where I am. Here we go. All right. There's our injector pipe. What make pump is that? Is that a CAV pump? Can't see. I've zoomed out a bit too far. Where are we? There we go. All right, we've got a make on this pump. I think that's going to be a CAV. But here's our pump here. I think I need to get that nut off on the top and take that pipe maybe right out. But let me see if I can get that pipe out. All right, here's our injector pipe. So that's the pipe what carries the diesel from the pump to our injector. All right, let me give all this a wipe. I will wash this all in diesel before I put it back in because we've got to be so scrupulously clean that everything needs to be totally grit free so I'm putting these in a safe environment up on my bench alright what have we got under here All right. now I think to prime these up properly I'm pretty sure you take this nut off and I think that's a control valve in there and then we take a spring off or something so I've slackened it. Let's see if we can get some diesel out. I think you take this out, this nut here. And see if we can get diesel out. Yeah, that, that rack is definitely free. Now I think there's a spring on there. I think. What's in here? Yeah, there's a spring there. There you go, there's our spring. And there's a valve in the top there. I'm pretty sure somehow we have to lift this valve up. I think, and that will release fuel. I mean, we've got diesel up to this point because we've had that nipple out and we've got diesel up there. But we should have diesel coming up to here. Yes. Uh, I can't turn that engine because that's on compression. But we'll see what we got here. Ah, that just lifted. See that? That lifts when you when the engine goes over compression. That's obviously when the injector fires. Ah. That's starting to fill with diesel, look. See that? Now that's lifted. 
So when that lifts, it is lifting diesel, so I think that may have just had some air trapped in there, perhaps. Now that valve's gone back down again now. I may be getting this all wrong. Maybe that's just sticky and a bit gummed up because that's been sitting dry for so many years. I really don't know. Right, I think we need to get this back together and then see if we've got any diesel again. Back in the moo. Right, I've got the diesel pipe back on. So all we're going to do is we're going to just turn this now and see if we can hear that injector creep a little. Which will mean we've got fuel. Come on. There we go. Yep, I don't know whether you can hear that. But I can hear, I can hear that injector squeaking. It's like click, 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 where that's pulsing open. Some of these diesels are more distinctive click than the other. This one's quite um, discreet. Uh, so next thing, I think we're going to be, change the oil. We'll put these covers back on. That's what we'll do. We'll get these covers back on this engine. Rocker cover and that side cover. And then we'll go in this crankcase and see what it's like in there. I might forward through this. I'm not sure if you guys are that interested in watching me just put this back together. Plus man cave style. I've lost my screwdriver. All right, here we go. So that goes this way up. That will go on there. That will go on there. And there's one in. Alright, there's one in. There's two in. Now, if I remember rightly, that cable clamp went on that top one. Do you remember that, guys, or have I got that wrong? Well, I think the cable clamp went on that top one. Did that go on there? Yeah, I think it did. That looked right. There we go. So there we have it. We have our cover back on. Alright, let's see if we can get this rocker cover back on. Now there is a gasket here somewhere. Where did the gasket go? Here it is. That gasket was actually split up that end. But I haven't got another one, so this will have to do us just for today. And I will order another one. There you go. I can push that back together. There we go. Right. Have I got that lined up? Come on. Now oh, that one's lined up. That one's lined up. There we go. Where's my socket for that? I'm pretty sure it was this. There you go. That's got her button back down. Sorry this video is a bit long, but 
I don't like to edit too much out, you see. I like you guys to see the full kit and cabagle. If you don't like to see the whole kit and cabagle, I'm sorry. But I think some of you go, you'd always forward through it if you don't like it. Alright, let me get my... <clears throat> let me get my sockets. And we'll get one to fit this crankcase door. Uh, probably this one. Yep. Oh, wow. Well. And let's just have a look what's inside here. Because remember, that won't show on any oil on the dipstick. Now, do this bolt actually screw in, or is there a big metal bar behind that? Do you know, I think that might be one of them with a big metal bar behind it. I really don't know. Will that come off now? Right, here we go. We've got some pressure on that. That door is nearly off. Right, I'm going to keep some pressure on that in case there's anything unwall in there. So I don't know what this bolt go into. I know sometimes there's a big bar behind them which actually goes across. Now whether that is like that. Ah, oh, it is, look. That like, oh, I see this. That's nitty, look. That just nips in. Well, that's natty, isn't it? So is there any oil in this, or... It's looking hopeful that we haven't actually been sold an engine. Oh, no, that's got oil in there. Look at all that, look. Tons of oil. Tons. Just not enough to show on the stick. So I think, oh, look at the internals of that. She actually looks half clean. There's our cam, our crank, and I can hear the oil pump squirt and oil as well. So everything's getting nicely lubricated in there. This engine's looking a little bit hopeful. Let's get the drain bung out the other side. All right, we're back. We was come undone. Cool. Wow, taking the whole bung out. I don't want the whole bung out on that end off. Yeah, I don't really want to take that whole thing out. I'm assuming this nut just come off the end. Let me see if I can get some grips and hold that. Alright, let's get some grips on here. Just see if we can hold that so it don't come off. Well, we need to come up a bit more. A couple more turns. Still not holding. There we go. Oh, one more turn, I think. Give that some stick. Alright, that's got that on. So let me come round here and see if I can get that end to crack off. Ah, here we go. There we go. There you go, that's all we wanted. We want to just hold that pipe so the whole end didn't come off. Alright, let's get this oil out. I know she ain't hot, but... God, she's taking a bit of time to come out. So let's let that drain. Then we'll get in there and get some cleaning done.
concrete. That's about as far as that's about all the oil we're going to get out of there. So now we're going to come back around this side and I'm going to shoot a bit of diesel in the bottom of that crankcase and aggravate it with a paintbrush. Of course, there's probably a lot of sludge and stuff and rubbish in there. So we'll give that a clean out and see what's happening. Right, I've got a bit of diesel in my pot. Shove him in. There we go. That still isn't running out there very quick, which told me there's a lot of sludge in there. So let's thin that down and aggravate it with a brush and see if we can get a bit more out of there. I think that'll work. Let me shove a bit more diesel in there. There we go. So we've got a bit more diesel in that crankcase. That still isn't running out very hard. So I'm going to get a paintbrush and just jump about in there. So we've got a nice new paintbrush. We're still not running out of that overflow. Oh! Oh yes. Yeah. There's a lot of sludge built up around there, I think. There should be an oil strainer in here. This is base. This is just giving it a little clean up inside. This is giving it a little clean up inside the crankcase. That's all that's doing, really. There we go. All right. I think we need to empty my little pot. Right, we've got that cleaned out and all the oil is now out. So I'm going to put my bung back on. We'll put some oil back in this puppy. Now I looked on the book last night and that said three and a half pints. Because I have... Oh, I did download a instruction manual or a... What do you call it? A service and guide, that's the word. And that did give us the capacity for an oil change. And it is three and a half pints or two litres. So we'll bang two litres in the old girl. And see how we get on. So our oil got to go in the top, and then we'll see if this puppy will fire up. Let's get you up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get some oil in. So we've got just under two liters of oil. Cool, cool in our container let's bung him in the engine and see what we're like on the stick we might have to give that a couple of minutes to sell now do you reckon this old girl will go oh we ain't put the door back on look oh nightmare look what i done major accident we haven't put the door on and our oil is leaking out. Oh, mate. Oh, that's gone everywhere, look. Now, a smart man would edit this out. But I'm really not that smart. So is it going to get edited out? Probably not. Come on. Get back on. Why do these things never go on when you want them to? Oh, I can't believe that's happened. Oh, 
Oh, that's a nightmare, that is. We've wasted two litres of oil. No. How did that bloody thing go on? Come on. What a stupid idea of Lister's this. You're obviously got a hook. Well, we've wasted our oil now, so... I can't believe that's happened. So we have to put that in there. See what's got to happen, these lugs here need to come this side Ah, here we go There we go Alright, now I've got to tighten that up I can't believe I've gone and wasted two litres of oil A man cave does not like wastage Oh dear. Now do I edit this out or do I leave it in? <laughs> nah. We'll show you mistakes and all. Last time I did something like this I was 16 and I was an apprentice mechanic when I left school. And uh, my boss at the time said to me oh, Change it all in that Sierra. Oh, I don't believe I've done that. Look at all that lovely bubble and crew. I'm sure we've all done silly things. Anyhow, I went to change oil in this Sierra. I let the oil out. Left it to drain while we had tea break. After tea break, spun the filter on. Or spun the filter off, put the new filter on. I looked in the auto data book and that said, I don't know, 4.4 litres or something. So I shoved 4.4 litres in, checked the stick, nothing. I ended up putting, well, best part of 20 litres in that before I realised I hadn't put the sump bung in. So that's the last time I did something so idiotic as to waste an oil. So we edit this out. Right, what we're going to do now is put 2 litres of oil in here, because that's what the book says it needs. So here goes our 2 litres of oil. Yeah, you, you can hear me laughing. Because you know what I've just done. Oh well. I'll give you guys and girls something to laugh at. You yeah, know, like that stupid band cave. Didn't even put the bloody side back on the engine, did he? No, he was too impatient. He just wanted to get it going. I'm going to end up standing in that. Yeah, I'm going to end up standing in that. Oh, nightmare. The good part of having a dusty workshop floor. And this is a really good part of having a dusty workshop floor. When something like that happens, I can just get my rake here and just pull over. Yeah. Pull over some nice dust, and no one's any the wiser. Because this isn't even a this isn't even a um, concrete floor in this workshop, you know. It's just dirt. There you go. And once I soak that up, I'll scoop that up with a shovel. I'll scoop that up with a shovel and dispose of that properly. We just want that to... Right, anyhow, that's enough of that. Enough of that BS. We want to see if this puppy starts, don't we? So, do you reckon she's going to go? Whatever's that flying about in front of the camera? You know, it's tiny little dust particles flying in front of my flash and this camera's picking it up. 
Anyhow, let's see if this thing fires up. I hope so. We've got two litres of oil in there, which should be plenty. That's what the book said it needed. But now I've had a minute, we will check the old dipstick. Oh, yes. We're up to the full. Look. Marvellous. So I think our oil level's right. So we've got nice fresh oil in there. The crankcase has been cleaned out. We have, we've done the injector, and I think we've primed the fuel system, so hopefully this is a go for go. There is an oil fill here, to fill this up with, to prime up with oil. Now do we need that? Uh, two degrees, that is cold, so... I'm going to put a little bit of oil in there, just to see. You know, that might just give it, because that is cold, and you do, these old listers do need a bit of oil. Can we get enough out of our jug? Whoa, there we go. we got tons there. There we go. Right, so we've got that primed up. Hopefully, this old girl will come back to life. So let's get our handle and have a look. See what happens. Right. Come on, girl. Wow. Well, that was mighty close. Mighty close. Oh, we well, got some smoke. I might even have that fuel rack the wrong way. I'm not sure which way that fuel rack's meant to be. This handle, don't grab this pulley very well. Oh, I think that fuel rack is right. Well, we seem to be getting some spit. There's no smoke out of that exhaust. Well, look at that. You know, she sounds really sweet. That's nowhere near as noisy as I thought that was going to be. Yeah, she runs really nice, look. She runs really nice. Lovely
past the cover of space where that is on up right under. There we go. That's our cover of space. It should be 1500 red. Appears to run really nice. Shut up. Now let's give her another rev. There you go. We're in the off position now. I like how that engine automatically decompresses when that's shut down. That's this whole startomatic thing, you see. This solenoid automatically decompresses it when it shuts it down. It cuts power to it, which then releases that decompressor. So when you energize it, it actually holds holds that decompressor on clever stuff but there you go well i'm really impressed you see how much starting she took whether that would have started without all that prime and the fuel system and that would it have gone if i'd have just chucked diesel down the pipe i don't know we'll never know that but I'm one of these people, I'd rather not just chance it, chuck diesel in an engine and hope. I like to have a little look through them first. And I was going to wait until I had the generator coupled up to it and do it then, but I thought, well, what if the engine don't run? We put it all on that trailer and then that's got to come off again. But now we know that engine goes on that trailer. Do I paint this engine? Do I go full-blown restoration and sand all that down and paint it? Or do I just give it an oily rag and leave as it is? Now the bit that gets me is it's still got the original list of decal on there and the original list of decal on there. So I'm tempted to just obviously put a new rocker cover gasket on there because that is leaking oil because that's split. I'm really tempted to just clean this engine within an inch of its life give it a coat of linseed oil or something and leave it you know leave it just leave it looking original I will paint the generator because that isn't very good but I'll probably do that sympathetically to match the engine if you know what I mean I can sort of I can paint that and then weather it down so it matches the engine do you see what I'm saying so you ain't got a nice glossy dynamo and a manky looking engine i think i can tone them to match but i shan't do none of that until that is mounted back on there so i can see what it looks like it looks bad at the minute but it might look just it might you know weather and look the same so we'll give everything a clean see but that's going to be it for today's video hope you like seeing the old girl go sorry that's a long video Am I going to edit out my cock up of leaking the oil? Nah, we'll leave it in. Like I say, you guys level off at that. You know I've worked up a sweat because the hat has come off. Where's the stupid aeroplane? Can you hear that? There he is. Now cutting behind that tree, look. There he goes. Ta-da! You can't see him, can you? Anyhow, we're not looking at tornadoes or whatever that thing is. I'm a bit back in the day talking about tornadoes, aren't I? Right. Anyhow, there's our engine. Lister SR1. Is it SR1? S1 L S L1. SL1, look. It's an SL1. 3.6 horsepower, 1500 revs. See what I mean by that hole? When I had it there, the engine was running at full power. So I'm guessing 
when the startomatic bit works, that solenoid again, tink, holds this up. Yeah, that must hold that up. And then when it de-energizes, kung, lets that down, engine stops. Very clever stuff. I just hope I can get all this electric stuff here to work. I hope. Right, I'm going to stop burbling on and let you guys get on. Right, thank you very, very much for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. All my regulars already have, but if you're new to the channel and you like this, I'm always posting videos like this. Give us a look. Look me up on Facebook, Norfolk Man Cave. Or you can look me up as me, Adam Fenn. You'll find me on there. Right, I'm going, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha. <laughs> I love it.